the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Hello and welcome to show 25 of Grey Hat Beard. We are into our second year of recording Grey Hat Beard. We are the modern workplace uh, podcast that talks about all things in modern workplace and Microsoft 365. I'm the hat. I'm, I'm the hat. Not, <laughs> I'm the, that not. was a good start for the second year. <laughs> I'm the grey of grey hat fit. Uh, my name's Kevin McDonald. I'm a solutions architect at CPS. I'm Al Nerdley, a uh, solution architect at CPS. I am the hat and I do wear a hat. So, Kevin, stay away. No hats for you. Um, and I'm an MVP as well. Uh, and my name is Gary Trinder. I'm also a solutions architect at uh, CPS. I'm a Microsoft Office Development MVP and member of the PMP team. And we are joined by a guest this week. Uh, Veronique, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Veronique and I'm a dual Microsoft MVP. Um, I'm also um, a maintainer for the PMP PowerShell module and I'm also a solution architect for CPS. That's right. So Veronique joined us back in October and uh, I've been thinking about having on the show before then, but we thought ah, it'd be much easier to hire her and then we can persuade her to come on a lot more easily and put in <laughs> objectives and stuff like that. All the, all the good things there. Uh, no, thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to talk in the first part on news and then the second part we're going to be chatting about uh, the celebration of aut automation, which is why we've asked Veronique to talk, uh, come and join us as we talk about PowerShell. So, we've had 2020 has finished. <sighs> ah, Unfortunately, <I'm> <laughs> 2021 seems to be uh, filling in the same vein at the moment. So, maybe not the greatest of things going on, but uh, we do have a little bit of news. Um, but seeing as it's following in the vein of 2020, we've actually started off with quite a few outages and stuff like that. So I, I think, Gary, you've you've had some fun and games with the Power Platform this week, haven't you? Uh, yes. Yeah, a couple of times, in fact. Yeah. Uh, the first problem was issues with the editor and authentication, um, not being able to get in and edit edit apps. And, you know, if you can't do that and you're actually working on an app, there's not a lot really else you can do. Um, and uh, to follow that up, um, just happened to be today, uh, working on a data flow and what should happen. Data flows go down as well, amongst other things. Um, more editor issues, can't open apps. Um, and on both days, you know, the, it was a substantial outage. We're not talking half an hour here. We're talking, you know, uh, whole afternoons um, as well. So, you know, I think, um, yeah, there's uh, there's definitely some creakage going on, um, as we've seen in other areas as well, other companies keeping services up. And, um, you know, maybe it was just, you know, 2020, all the resources <laughs> have been used up and we got to 2021 and someone forgot to uh, turn the tap back on. <laughs> it was exactly right. On uh, the, the Monday after New Year's, so was it the, the 4th, uh, there was the Slack outage, outage as well uh, that went through. So I think people joined and obviously there's a lot of competition for these uh, different people and uh, Slack wasn't working. Which wasn't they just the, transferred uh, the... They transferred the subscription over to um, Salesforce. Then Did they forget to uh, <laughs> forget to pay the bill. Forgot to change uh, the DNS, probably. Yeah. Our certificates. It's one of the certificates. Other yeah, <laughs> has to be one of those. And we we were talking a bit uh, last time about um, Google and the the outage. I think we we covered. Uh, I don't know if we talked about what it was, but there, there seemed to be something uh, around internal storage. We'll, we'll put that link in the show notes that uh, effectively they seem to run out of storage. And that's why they had an outage, which is really quite shocking when you think about it. it that's, that's phenomenal when you think about it. The amount of storage that we just take for granted now and you think they ran out. Is that, I don't know, loads of people sending virtual Christmas cards or something. Yeah, exactly. But all the all these outages, they kind of equate to you know making up for us not having snow days, really, don't they? You know, you yes. end up just having an afternoon off, right? Can't do it, can't work. Just have an afternoon off. I, I think certainly teams... one of the issue, one of the Microsoft ones was uh, definitely that there was nothing I could do. I was waiting on something to go live, and uh, it wasn't working at all. Yeah, I think Teams was uh, running a bit slow today as well. I just on the BBC that it said it was it said it was in Scotland, but I can't imagine that they had it tailored that much just to uh, just to teams in Scotland not working. 
Well, that How was, was it for you? Can, was it working OK for you today? Fine, no problem. So yeah, whether whether they're just a uh, quick let's blame teams on on things not working. Yeah, can't get the, the vaccine out quick enough. Teams is fault. No, Zoom's perfect. Kind of be that. That's, uh, <laughs> But it, I, I mean, joking aside, then uh, obviously for those who don't know here in the UK at the moment, there is another lockdown and uh, the vast majority of children are at home. So uh, learning from home, the, the load on teams must have suddenly jumped up a fair bit over the last week. I think a lot of a lot of kids went back to school today, didn't they? That's true. Yeah. So, well, actually, no, I thought they were working from home uh, yesterday. No, a, lot, a lot went back today. Is is that dependent in which region you're living in? <laughs> Consult yeah, your local be, yeah. uh, local guidelines. Just I don't that think they went back in my son's got that top. <laughs> you, you think they went back today or didn't go back today? No, I don't think in Scotland they went back today. I think it was more around probably the 18 review on the 18 or something like that, but not quite sure. I thought it was that. Well, I think whatever it is, we'll let's hope that Microsoft have a bit more uh, power to throw at teams over the coming days and weeks. Uh, certainly, as more if more kids are still going to go back, then they need to make sure that they actually have enough power to support them all. Yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, slightly slightly worrying times, really. But uh, I, th I think on the power platform, whether it's related, and we didn't talk about this at the beginning, but I just remember there was one bit of news that's come out this week, and that's the ability to share Dataverse uh, apps. Um, so the the power apps in Teams within a, a specific team, you can now share outside of that team as well, which I'm kinda, I can see why people want it. I don't entirely understand why Microsoft have done it. Uh, feels like it's sort of step backwards so you know the whole point was to have an app for that team if you wanted to go beyond that you're going for the pro license but uh, we've now got all the pain of governance with things all over the place plus you can share it even wider so you're going to get even more of a governance problem being shared everywhere it felt a slightly odd move it, uh, no it kind of makes sense if you want to capture data so when you want to capture data but you don't want to have everybody working in that team. So if you think about an HR team, to be able to create an app and then publish it out, and then you've still got the HR team actually working within that single team, it kind of makes sense in that kind of scenario. Yeah, and I'm guessing you don't then, because it's going into Dataverse, you're not then having the dependency like you would with storing in SharePoint, for example, of having lists and having to give people read-only access. So yeah, I think that, that scenario that you've just mentioned now does make a lot of sense. Yeah, um, but it's, it still means all your data is stuck in there because you can't really move that data yeah, easily in and out of that. Yeah. So you've got that's, absolutely and that's, a lot of isolation. It, there is a lot of isolation, but it keeps that. I guess it just adds that that easier interface to say rather than having to create a team where I'm going to have my absence booking system and all of the conversations add everybody into that team. I can have conversations around it, documents, policies, whatever in that team, but still have all of the data, but have everybody in the rest of the organization actually contributing to that data. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I can certainly see from an end user perspective why you want it. Uh, and, and I think that that is probably what's driven it. But uh, if I was a power platform admin, I'd be cursing a little bit, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, I think if I, if I was a power platform admin, allowing other people into that wouldn't make any difference i'd still be cursing because there's going to be so many environments to manage <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah, yeah that is a I was, yeah. very fair point environments is the pain point there definitely yeah uh, center of excellence is your friend it certainly is 100 percent on that one so uh yeah i think some some nice news it it's, it feels a bit flat at the end of this year in terms of news and, and what's come out Usually we're expecting a few things, certainly for me, uh, search in Microsoft Teams, moving to Microsoft Search, I was expecting to hit by the end of the year. Uh, more bits on Project Cortex, um, they, so, they haven't come out yet. Just to jump ahead a little bit, you might need to wait till March for that. Till March, really? Ignite. Well, ignite. Yeah. Uh, but they'll, they, maybe they they'll were... save all of that fun to Ignite. Maybe. <laughs> 
and then it will be ready and you'll have an influx of stuff so easter holidays book it all out because you'll have uh, hopefully loads of stuff to uh, to investigate and play with then that sounds good i, I mean and, and quite possibly but it, it certainly there were there were hints that the searching teams would come out by the end of the year and they said at the last ignite that the rest of cortex will come out by the end of the year just got a little bit quiet so uh did yeah. they say which <laughs> they they did say the current year as well so uh, calendar uh, or uh, microsoft <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could be, yeah, it could be financial year, of course. Just still got some time there. Oh, we're not cynical at all, are we? <laughs> <laughs> setting expectations, Al. It's all about setting expectations. <laughs> I think it's a problem with us all being at home and not going out and meeting people. We can't burn out the cynicism and in the pub after these uh, user groups that we're doing on podcasts instead. Yeah. Uh, talking of cynicism, I, I think there was, but well, actually not really cynicism, I think there was some pretty big news that came out towards the end of last year and it's gradually been tripping out more and more and that's the the solar winds hack so th those who haven't heard it solar winds massive monitoring organization that uh, installs software in many organizations including a lot of governments uh, especially the u.s government um, helps monitor and track what's happening in your environment uh, one of my previous organizations had it had a lot of big dashboards it, it really really good tool i have to say a great great one that's uh, run by there and uh, if anyone's ever used wireshark um, i noticed they've they were bought by uh, solar winds as well so be very careful using that but they they were hacked and it looks like malicious people managed to get in some of their code into the solar winds app itself and then has got into other organizations including microsoft and uh, i'm sharing on the screen here the the microsoft security response center um, that's got some details on really what what they found, what you should do, what this means for global security. Um, and, and I don't think this is the end. I, I think we're going to keep hearing more and more about the the impact of this and, and what's happened. Uh, I imagine there'll be lots of things we, we don't hear about at all as well. I think there'll be lots that you don't hear about for this. It's, I think it's a new it's a new attack vector that a lot of organisations didn't expect they ex always expected that someone like solar winds wouldn't wouldn't be vulnerable to code being inserted into the tools that they were actually deploying via updates mm. um, i think one of the thing key things about it is that solar winds can be run offline as well so it gets into places that you know you would never usually expect um code to go because nobody can really validate an update package to that level and do you know pen testing on every single update that comes down um so i think it's it's a yeah it's a it's a new threat it's a new approach um and for it to take place with as you say someone like solar winds who manage so many enterprise and governmental organizations it's uh yeah very concerning although that being said i don't think that many you know a purport as a proportion of the the use, user base of the solar winds tool it's a very 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 small number who have been impacted um in is terms that, of is that known or suspected in, in terms of the the suspected usage where they've actually activated the the vulnerability right okay so what's the vulnerability <laughs> do you think it's because they haven't updated uh, often enough <laughs> i think they were only they were, it's a kind of a blanket attack to get it out everywhere and then pick right, pick okay. and choose which organizations have the most uh, the most value to actually activate the vulnerability in oh that's interesting okay I, I did see one article that i've seen slightly countered so i'm, I'm going to be slightly cautious saying this but there were some hints that it was to do with JetBrains uh, and team city the, the effectively the pipeline so when you build and compile your code and then publish and deploy it through a, a pipeline they reckon they managed to get into that pipeline it's that that injected into there so i think it's a very very good reminder to get your security i know gary we, we've talked a bit about code security before but yeah. also your pipeline security making sure it, it, if that's corrupted that you know, all sorts of things can be put in there there's yeah. similar similar a similar scenario that we had before was um the libraries was it NuGet? 
Oh, yeah, the package management. The package management yeah. libraries that had vulnerabilities inserted NPM into them. as well is, is another big thing. Um, I think it, it's one of those things that it highlights where vulnerabilities can be kind of highlighted in areas that you wouldn't necessarily suspect. Um, but uh, if they are vulnerable, it's very difficult to kind of track. Um, so uh, going to point that um, Kev's just made about JetBrains, yet yeah, they've basically come out and said they've not been they've not done anything in regards to the yeah. attack and uh, it uh, basically solar winds are a customer of theirs using um team city um but you know uh, i think they've replied and said yeah it's it, we, we weren't doing the attack but it's interesting that you know as everyone moves to you know put, build pipelines more of a devops approach that if your pipelines are um you know vulnerable people can inject things into your code that is going into your production environment. Exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just because it's being built that way, you know, it doesn't mean that it's not, um, you know, prone to attack. Um, and like I say, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to diagnose really. So, yeah. And I think it just highlights now that, you know, we need these tools, uh, some tools that I've been looking at as well, some vendors out there about, you know, checking vulnerabilities, making sure your dependencies are, are up to date as well. You've not got, you know, running loads of out of date NPM packages or new get packages, um, you know, and, and that's keeping the cycle going, right? How, how many times do you, you go and do a project and then that code just stays there? You know, now with using open source technology, it's constantly moving forward for this very reason. It's very difficult. Uh, sorry, it's very easy to stay behind if you're not thinking from a, you know, a, a maintenance point of view to just, you know, even if it's keeping those dependencies up or looking at uh, 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 deprecations and, and making decisions to say, you know, do we have to change the tools that we're using, write our own, you know. Uh, but I think that's that's how this vulnerability for SolarWinds got out, running updates on on the SolarWinds software. So it's kind of a, <laughs> bit of a there's a bit of a balance to be struck, and I think it's it's up to the industry to come up with a a solution to that. Um, you know the uh, the old adage with Microsoft of never go for the first release, always wait for the point one release. Um, you know, it's the same sort of but thing. I think to a certain but I, I think you've you've got a balance between that. At, at, absolutely, you know, if you get the very latest, there could be bugs there. But the assumption that you stay where you are, you won't get bugs, is wrong. If you oh, stay well. where you are, there could very easily be security vulnerabilities as well. So, uh, well, I guess that's why the you know the, the support models analysis. for most most organisations now is you know n minus one, n minus two, you know, and not anything anything yeah. older than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Don't stick around on SharePoint 2003 as we were talking about before the show. <laughs> please, please don't. <laughs> but if you are there, we can migrate you up to <laughs> Office 361. <laughs> exactly. We've been talking to our sales team too much this oh, week. Um, <laughs> talking of sales, uh, NVIDIA is buying ARM. So uh, ARM, the chip maker, so I think, most famous for uh, being used previously in the iPhone and many other mobile ones. They're obviously branching a little bit further with uh, uh, there's obviously you can get the, the surface based arm and things like that. So and now I'm going to get caught out slightly here, but I think they they create the chip design, don't they? They don't necessarily yeah. manufacture the chips themselves. So they don't manu buy the they don't design manufacture from our, anything. It's just yeah, it's just design and license. That's right. So, so getting that license, uh, and they're being bought up by Nvidia, which I, I think is uh, very interesting. You think of Nvidia, you think graphics chips, but obviously those graphics chips being used for Bitcoin mining and uh, machine learning and all, all sorts of heavy processing uh, things these days. So it's growing more and more. Whether whether the aim is just to kind of have two companies that support each other, whether there will be any bringing together of those or what I, I don't know I think it's a very interesting move I think it still has to go through the uh, competitions authorities in various various regions yeah yeah that's, it hasn't been say, confirmed it would, completely yet it would be a bit of a conflict of interest I think yeah but I, I I think it's interesting that that's happening while at the same time uh Gary's favorite story and becoming my one of the the M1 chips with uh Apple 
Uh, so Apple are now kind of making their own chips effectively and moving moving away from ARM and doing their own thing. Um, so wh whether this is in any response to that as well, I, I don't know. But I, I have to admit, as, as Gary knows, I'm often mocking of people with Apples, but that M1 chip has tempted me severely. So uh, starting to look at getting some internal approval for budgets uh, around one of those. Yeah, I, I at, at first it, it it didn't it wasn't on my radar, and then the just the general kind of feeling of of people going, no, no, this is something different, and and this is this is quite special in in what it can actually do. Um, I think you know the fact that the Apple are making this decision to move away from Intel. You know, they've made the big decision to move to Intel years ago, and now moving away as well is that. You know, it'd be interesting to see what's happening in the, the these markets, like you say, and Nvidia and ARM um, mm -hmm. as well. Like, where does this leave Intel? And do you think a, a world where Intel is not kind of you know up there? Uh, it seems a bit strange, but um, yeah, the 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 new Mac range, uh, the the minis, uh, you know, th for the new technology and, and the price point is actually really good compared, to, you know, considering what you get. Um, you know, and that's always a, an issue with people always uh, who don't want to go to the Mac side. Oh, it's really expensive, but you get what you pay for, is what I say. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the price point is really good as well. But it's going to be interesting. To hours see. of pain and having to relearn all that muscle memory. But uh, I, I'm right. still thinking about taking that plunge. And I think what what really caught my eye was the fact you can run all the mobile apps and things. So I, I do use Apple phones and iPads. That all those apps can now be used on the the mac itself as well um and what it could mean is a version of teams that actually works that, that would be really quite nice so uh that that's what's tempting me severely i think i i, I think it's the convergence of the two worlds now i think yeah. it's the, the the we've been used to tablets and the app model if you like didn't want to say app model because that's different connotations right um but um yeah i, I think the, bringing the 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 apps from the iPad onto Mac OS, I think is is a great move. I think, mm. um, you know, from a, a usability point of view as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's where you know we've always said, oh, I can do things on my phone, but I can't do things on my desktop. And why is it so different? Well, now it's the worlds are merging even closer. Now, Al, obviously you've invested recently in a brand new PC, so you're, you're not trying not to get tempted by this at all, are you? Uh, no, Teams Teams performs well, as in I can <laughs> have a Teams meeting and do other things, so I'm quite happy. It's How expensive. much RAM does your PC have? Uh, yeah, 32 gig. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And you don't have to open Visual Studio because you never do any code. So we're oh, safe I, do, there, I, I have code open. Yeah, I have code open. Don't use it. I just have it open for show, just so I can all tab to it. <laughs> and, but just... and Veronique's in there going, oh, boys and their gadgets. <laughs> well, I have plenty myself. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about the uh, why Teams might be going slowly. Did anyone else notice that CES is actually using Teams? No, really. Because CES has gone online. It just struck me, actually, that Potentially, there might be quite a lot of people using Teams for CES. So, so CES, for those who don't know, we're talking about the Consumer Electronics Show. So this is all about consumer electronics and gadgets and uh, if the BBC News articles from previous years. An awful lot of virtual sex uh, and sex hardware tools. Oh, we can see where you look, <laughs> can't we? <laughs> they, they always talk about this every year as the big event is one of these. But, what what uh, time does this There are some other out? ones. We're going to get an explicit category after that. So, uh, yeah, so they're running. So that's all virtual because that's running now or soon. Yeah, that's running at the moment. Now that that also explains because I saw Jeff Teeper tweet about it. And I thought that was a bit strange. Now I'm like, my, uh, yeah, Microsoft have gone back. For the Brad Smith was doing a keynote for the first time in over a decade. So uh, yeah, I wonder how because I, I mean we've all been on virtual events where it's been run on Teams and you know you set up a tenant. I wonder how many accounts they've actually set up for CES. Is it just out of interest? Do they have a power platform app as part of it as well? Yeah, they might be doing surveys. You never know. Yeah. Or they might be using forms. I don't know. Microsoft <laughs> yeah. forms. 
don't know. We'll have, we'll have to register and find out. Mm. Yeah, I'll keep me stick and see what's coming out. I kind of assumed there wouldn't be much uh, this year, but uh, you never know. Well, it just may not be suited to, to your particular <laughs> interests. No, I've walked into that one. I really shouldn't have mentioned that. <laughs> Uh, moving swiftly on to the events and ego posts before I, uh, so I can find a ladder somewhere to dig out of this hole. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to share a, a first blog post from uh, uh, someone that we know at CPS pretty well, a guy called John Brigginshaw. He's a, a recruiter uh, and he contacted me, I think it was back in October or November, and said that he, he'd kind of been working around the Microsoft realm as a recruiter for a while, but didn't really know much about it. So we, we had a, about an hour call just chatting about where he could learn more. I said to him, one of the things, best way to learn is to write up your journey as you're going along. So get a blog going, start down a path. I sort of recommended Microsoft Learn as well as a few things. I said, it, it was generally interested in Microsoft. I said, probably the best place would be the Power Platform. So have a look at that. And that's exactly what it's gone for. He's gone through the fundamentals module as part of Microsoft Learn and uh, He's starting to blog his journey along the way. So uh, it should be should be interesting. Have a look and see what he's going on the blog. But most importantly, it shows you that people can just get blogging and get involved in this. Uh, I, I think it's a really good example of that. I think it's it's always, I think I saw something about two 10-year-olds from Pakistan who uh, got certified <laughs> as uh, Power Platform developers. You know, it, it shows that anybody can, Anybody can learn the stuff. It's, you know, low code, no code. It's that's who it's intended for. It's not intended for developers, for people who have a, you know, a degree in in computer engineering or anything. It's it's designed for low code, no code for the end user. So I think, you know, when you, recruiters are are learning the technology, you know, you've got the likes of, of Alison Mulligan as well, who's now an MVP because of, you know, her passion for learning about the technology that she was recruiting for. Um, I think it's I think it's a great step forward to see to see people, especially recruiters who are you know working with people who know the technology. It's it it's, makes so much sense to understand the vocabulary and the you know the scope in more detail. Because I, I think many recruiters do get a, a bad name for themselves because they, they just seem to be in it there and not understand things. So I, I think it's really good we shout out guys like Johnny and. Uh, uh, Alison and Will Rowe as well, who oh, really yeah. tries hard to get involved in the community. Uh, I think it's really good to shout out. Uh, and apologies for the chuckle there about the, the two 10 year old Pakistani boys. Uh, I was just thinking if anyone does fail that exam and know they're worse than a 10 year old, uh, it's slightly uh, slight kick in the teeth, but uh, get back up, try again and you can definitely do it. I was it. just going to say thanks Alan, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's face it. We're all different, you know. <laughs> there is no shame in failing an exam. They're all di they're all difficult for different people, aren't they? So uh... <laughs> this this is what second shot exa exam vouchers were designed for, right? You go and take it, you fail Absolutely. it, find out where you need to focus, and then take it again. <laughs> Knowing the types of questions that they're going to ask is half the battle. <laughs> Yeah, but it is, it is interesting, though, like, you know, I've noticed definitely on LinkedIn, you know, the, all the badges going up from, uh, you know, your acclaim and, um, yeah, the different amount, you know, types of people who are actually looking at these exams now and it's a lot more accessible. So I think Microsoft have done a, a, a good job, really, in kind of revamping um, the, uh, the the certifications and, and you know, making the, the, the role based as well. Um, I know that we all went through the pain of, oh, you know, they're changing it again and we've got to do our exams again and all that kind of stuff. But I do think that it's been for the better. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And a lot more sense now what you actually learn from them. Whereas before it was, yeah. you got the badge and then you learn how to do it. A bit like some uh, people say with the driving test, whereas now they actually feel appropriate for. Yeah, the, the content as well is is th that goes along with them learning material is 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 so much better you know you've got microsoft to learn um portal as well and you know you'd be hard pushed not to find things on there now um there yeah. is there is a lot and you know there's a lot of work within microsoft to make sure that you know that content is is available from them uh, whereas before it was very much third parties right that would kind of go out and and, and do that job for them so, so yeah. you, do, you do also have the uh the frequent reviews and revisions of exams as well. So we'll watch Thanks. out for that because January the 27th, 
lots of exams are changing. So if you've been studying for one now, you want to make sure that you take it uh, before the 27th when the syllabuses are changing for quite a few of them. And there is a useful public service announcement. Definitely. Um, a very quick shout with you. We were talking about uh, children learning uh, Power Platform, uh, Rory Neary and others who do the Power Power Apps for Kids. A uh, great initiative. I'll, I'll try and get the link for the show notes. Um, but re really worthwhile, especially those of us uh, in the UK who've got kids uh, stuck at home. Uh, well worth having a look at that. Really good. Um, so what have we got coming? Oh, uh, sorry, Gary, I almost missed your one. Uh, you, you've been busy with the Microsoft CLI recently. Yeah, so over Christmas, I'd like to say it was uh, kind of down tools, but no, we have another release to do, as we always do every month. Uh, so yeah, uh, 3.4 um, came out um, in on the 3rd of January. Um, so yeah, more updates, more commands. Um, we've kind of made a lot of the authentication a bit easier this time around, uh, which is great. And you know that's been purely driven by feedback as well, which has been uh, fantastic. Um, a lot of the work there done by uh, Yannick uh, Reekmans, who's uh, uh, Office uh, Dev MVP as well. Um, and he, you know, he wrote a blog post, said, you know, this is a bit painful and actually followed it up and submitted PRs and basically made, you know, the world a better place, certainly for us. Uh, so, you know, that was fantastic that we were able to, you know, kind of get his feedback and we were able to turn that around in a matter of like, well, weeks. Um, you know, so, so that that was really good. Um, personally, from my point of view, uh, as you can see on the video, uh, I've been doing a lot of work on Docker. So we actually released uh, uh, some Docker images. So now you can install the CLI just through, uh, install and run the CLI with just one command using Docker. So we basically pre-install all the dependencies, um, do all of the configuration. So it, it, you just run it and use it. Um, and we're publishing out new versions every time we uh, release a, a new beta version, which is almost daily at the moment. And then obviously at the end of the month for the, the, the major release. So uh, that's something that I'm really interested in seeing how people are going to use that, um, you know, uh, using them in dev pipelines um, uh, uh, as well. Um, so, yeah, if you've not checked that out, uh, please do. Um, and yeah, uh, we've, uh, we've been very busy. Nice to have a break, but uh, it's uh, it's good. You know, people are getting involved. It's great. It's been interesting to look at the the year as well. So I've been doing a bit of a recap. Um, so it's a good post going to come out about the year that we've had. Um, and it, yeah, it's there's there's a lot of work that's gone on where you don't realise. <laughs> you just keep going forwards, but you know, every time you're going to sit back and and look at where you've come from. So yeah, that's going to come out soon. Okay, we'll run through a few events uh, coming up. So this uh, next week, the 19th of uh, Jan, is the Modern Workplace Conference in Paris. So I'm speaking there on uh, Microsoft Search. Uh, and then Jan the 28th, that has crept up very quickly, is Collab Days Birmingham. I think, is that just you, Al, speaking at that? Uh, I think so, yeah. So that's a, a <laughs> workplace. Sure. Well, there, I know there are other people speaking. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's not. Just, you, you definitely are good. Good. <laughs> I, I am speaking there. Yes. Uh, workplace, that, workplace, workplace analytics. analytics. Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet, so uh, we'll be dialing in for that. I think. Uh, yeah, that will be an interesting one. It's all about well-being and mental health and uh, the data that is available to to help support organisations in improving it. Absolutely, which is great. Uh, and then 4th of February, we've got the next London Power Platform user group. Uh, I've got Speakers TBC here. Is that uh, still the case, Al? That is, that is unfortunately still the case. Yeah, we <laughs> took rather, rather so if a, anyone's uh, listening indulgent and, uh... Christmas break and haven't, haven't sorted that out yet, but that will be sorted out soon. Uh, and then the day after that is the Global Automation Boot Camp 2021, I think. Veronique, you, you're confirmed to speak on that, aren't you? Mm, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What are yeah. you talking to the lovely listeners on that? Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Power Shell. <laughs> Power Shell and SharePoint. Um, okay. But I think, um, I think the audience is more like a beginner thing uh, for them because it, it, it's probably kind of the first time they're running like a PowerShell track or something like that. Um, okay. 
so yeah, trying to uh, you know spread the message out there for the PowerShell PNP, basically. Okay, fantastic. Well, that, that's good. So uh, I assume the uh, uh, PowerShell seven, the new version of PNP for that one, is it? Yeah, always now. I'm not going to really talk about uh, you know five point one or anything like that because that's that's in the past. In a few weeks, I think. Absolutely, so no, that's, that's good. And, to hear. and even I'm happy to hear that. Of just PowerShell five <laughs> needs to go away for a little while, and seven needs to become the default. Um, because yeah, the amount of times I write PowerShell on a Mac and then it goes onto a Windows machine, and then, oh no, it's out of date. That doesn't work. It's quite a discussion for sure after, but uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but the the fact is that if you know um, PowerShell for SharePoint was not available on seven, then I would still be on five point one. So let's get that for after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll save that for part two. Uh, I think the, the final thing, the Scottish Summit is coming up on 27th of Feb. Uh, we'll be speaking as Grey Hat Beard there on the etiquette of Microsoft 365 with a panel, which I just remembered I still need to invite people to. So we'll sort right. that out soon. Yes. Thank you for the reminder, yes. Kevin. Yes. Oops. Um, and uh, I think uh, I think uh, all of you are speaking there, aren't you? So I, I think, Veronique, you're speaking on PowerShell and, and SharePoint again in that one. Yeah. But right, we've because I'm going to do it in French. That's right. Yes. So if anyone wants to practice their GCSE in the UK or wants to practice a bit of French, uh, what you could do is listen to the Global Automation Boot Camp and then see how much you can learn when you do it in the Scottish Summit one as well. There's, there's a challenge for everyone. Uh, and Al, you're speaking about to do in the mental health. Yep. Yep. Microsoft to do managing tasks, ceremonies. Yep. And Gary, you're talking about the uh, the competitor to PMP PowerShell. Is is that right? Uh, I wouldn't say we're competitors. We, you know, we're doing the same role. Both <laughs> tools do similar jobs, just in different ways and different flavors. Uh, you know. Um, yeah, I'm talking about CLI for Microsoft 365. So how you can get started with it and how you can use it to you know, manage you know, Microsoft 365 tenant, uh, the workloads on there, and also a bit of SharePoint framework as well. So if you're a SharePoint framework developer, you know we're going to basically show you how we can help you uh, upgrade your projects uh, as well and keeping them up to date. Fantastic. Keeping recent and making sure you haven't got any uh, security issues, as we mentioned earlier. Yep. Uh, so yeah, a quick one that's slipped uh, slipped by for a lot of people is the uh, Ignite coming up between March 1st and 4th. So you think Ignite, you think September. Nope, out the window this time. It's going to be in March as well. So keep uh, an ear out for that. I'm sure more information will gradually start coming through. Um, but get, get registered, make sure you book out some of the good slots because they, they do book out on there. Do you think they just forgot to put the tour at the end? <laughs> because isn't that usually around this time? Um, but then, but then the tour is usually the same sessions from Ignite, just done locally. So uh, yeah, I think this has baffled baffled quite a few people. Yeah, but there's bound to be lots of co great content in there. Talking of great content, I think it's time we wrapped up part one and got on to part two, talking about a celebration for automation. So we can have Gary and Veronique arguing about which one's better again. <laughs> uh, so stick around to listen for part two and we'll speak to you soon. <laughs> <laughs>